G'day everyone, this is Mike. This is our first year in class for the week and Nadi and I are super excited. Uh, as always, just do what feels safe and comfortable. I've decided to add, get rid of all the dynamic classes because I actually hated teaching, it was a real train wreck. I didn't hate teaching it, but I actually feel more comfortable doing the yin and I think yin is more appropriate for what's going on right now. And Nadi completely agrees. Um, we'll drop in the sutras, we're back down to the root chakra and I'm going to read out my sutras um, as we're laying down. So everyone just come to a, a lying position. You want your knees bent and the soles of the feet are on the mat. I might have two cushions today because I'm feeling very, um, I don't know, like I just need to be spoiled. Uh, close your eyes, draw the chin to chest, nice long neck, chin tucked, eyes soft, guys. Oh, and it's nice to consciously relax. So this is different from lying in front of a TV. Probably a lot of us are doing that. Uh, I hope you're on the floor, by the way, <laughs> and not um, just watching me. You've got to do it, guys. It's way more fun to do it. So just get on the floor, move the coffee table. And uh, yeah, we'll just have a nice relax to begin with. So clear the throat through the nose. <clears throat> And then drawing your ujjayi breath. So ujjayi, we restrict the base of the throat, we clear the throat where we cleared it. And then the breath becomes like a ribbon of breath. So it's deep into the belly. The consistency is really creamy, smooth and fine. And you want to breathe in so much that you stretch the belly, which stretches the vagus nerve, which is a huge relaxation nerve in the body. It's the easiest to trigger, actually. Just exhale out, guys, and just keep breathing. Deep belly breaths in and out. The inhale and exhale match in duration with time. Keep breathing. Now, some of you might have in a previous year in class, uh, I invited you to have your palms up and some of you, we played with the palms down as well, which restricts your breathing. We want palms up. It makes a big difference. Just do that. Always palms up, guys. Hand placement is really important. that every exhale the body releases and relaxes. I've got a little puppy dog staring me out between my legs. It's very intimidating, Nadi. What are you doing, Bubba? <laughs> He's just wondering why I'm breathing so funny, actually. It's very cute. Keep breathing. So every exhale the muscles release, every exhale the breath softens, heart rate slows. We're going to do a body scan now, so just breathing a little more normally. Keep the ujjayi, it's a cooling, calming breath. Breathing through the nose is really important. It tickles the nerves and the sinus palate, relaxing our body even more. Bring your awareness to the big toes of both feet. Draw a line through the arches to the heels. Then add edges of the feet to little toes, remain little toes. And then tops of feet. See if you can feel the pulse in the veins, tops of feet. And then ankles, and then spiraling up shins and calves, calves melt away. And then knees, and then spiraling down thighs and hamstrings. And the hips, lower back, line looks nice and heavy. Now you're going to try and tune my sutras. And then the middle back imprint diaphragm lifts. And 
then the upper back imprints so the shoulders are wide, the arms heavy, the neck is long, the jaw is soft, the eyes soft, everything soft. It's a beautiful gift, guys. So when we're relaxed, we're more inclined to pursue our conscious desires and not our compulsive desires. Relaxation is key. So all the healing is, all the transformation. Good job, guys. And bring your awareness to the pelvic floor, just the very base of your torso, right deep inside the groin. Root chakra, this is our grounding earthing chakra and this is a really good time to activate we'll spend the whole week every class dropping these sutras in sutras of one word intentions there's four in each chakra and this week we'll focus on the four sutras for the earth chakra so we drop them in like a pebble into a pond i'll explain them at the end now every cell in our body or every atom in our body of which there's trillions has the elements of space, air, fire, water, and earth. And these sutras are representative of, of those elements. That's why this is so earthy. So the first sutra is flexibility. And we're dropping it deep inside the pelvic floor with our mind's eye. Flexibility. 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 Second sutra is transformation. 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 Third sutra is coherence. 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 And the fourth sutra is stability. Spit stability, 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 and all together flexibility, transformation, coherence, stability, flexibility, transformation, coherence, and stability. Nice guys. So when we drop in the sutra of flexibility, just like space and air being able to move quickly and swiftly, we want to be able to have the life experience of being able to be adaptable. We'll be able to be adaptable and less inclined to be swept up with the dramas of life. Transformation represents the element of fire. If you think about what fire does to water, it can transform it into ash. We want to be able to transmute our life experiences into learning opportunity. Coherence or cohesion is represented by water. And we want to feel a unified purpose, not just within ourselves, but with other people. And stability represented by earth is having a grounded, uh, centered awareness in the midst of uncertainty, which is really appropriate for these times. Stretch your arms overhead, roll facing towards me. We'll go into breath flow. And as usual, Nadi will critique my form. <laughs> so we're going to come into a knee base plank and then exhale, round your back, come into a high back child's pose, inhale, chin tucked, round your back, plank, and then exhale, lengthen through your armpits, round your back, plank, exhale, plank, exhale, Plank and then exhale. Just a few more, guys. Nice and oily, guys. So we're oxygenating the body, rinsing out the nervous system, oiling up the joints. Cat cow. This is kind of cool. This lubricates the spine and stretches your belly. So we inhale and then exhale. Hips tuck, chin tuck, round your back, pulling your belly. Inhale, drop your belly. This top makes me look fat. I'm actually not that fat, guys. <laughs> Exhale. Inhale, round your back. Exhale, keep going. Inhale. 
Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good job, guys. We'll go into circles. I'm going to show you what it looks like to the front. So the hands and the knees are hip width apart. Hi, baby. And then circles. Are you looking at what I'm doing? See? You can do a little baby or a puppy. Okay, guys, and then child's pose. There was a break there, I hope you don't recognise that. <laughs> child's pose is really nice. Oh, hi, Daddy. You like child's pose? Or puppy pose. I don't know what that looks like. Nice, guys. So coming all the way up, have a, a water break. And we'll go into toe stretch. I had to stop the video there for a second. Because uh, it stopped. I have no idea why. Um, so we come into our hands and knees. We make a tight fist. Thumbs face forward. I'll show you what it looks like sideways. We're going to tuck our toes and then just walk our hands towards our knees. We've done this before, guys, and then just swaying your hips side to side. Just letting your butt settle near the heels. And then what you can do, you can see my toes are tucked there. For a lot of you, this is all you need to do. You don't need to do any more of this. If you want more of a stretch, you can slowly walk your torso up. So the more the shoulders are on top of the hips or closer to the, the line of the hips, the more of a stretch you're going to get, the more intensity. It's not for everyone, okay? And I'll show you at an angle. There it is there. So we just want to um, close our eyes, breathe into where we feel it, which should be in the feet. Of all the poses, this doesn't seem to get easier, just deeper. But remember, yoga is challenging so that life becomes less challenging. <laughs> and guys, you can practice your hand placement. So palms down, there's a slight rotation in the humerus, which constricts our breathing a little, or palms up, opens it all up. I think Nadi might be hungry. So we'll have something to eat after this. We'll all have something to eat after this. Yeah. He's still cute, guys. He misses you. He misses your smells, guys. Huh? He's just looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> Gets that from me. <laughs> nice, guys. Make sure your heels don't go up through your pelvic floor, your root chakra. <laughs> Just a few more breaths. Good job, guys. And then change on your hands and knees and just release. Release your feet and just give them a tap. Nice, guys. Buddy, are you going to be everywhere? Is this what's happening? Hmm? We'll do uh, a neck stretch, guys. So you want a cushion underneath your shins and another cushion. Underneath, there's the sutras that Nadi chewed. Underneath your heels and butt. And bring your knees out wide. And what we're gonna to do today is a straight chin to chest stretch. And what we're gonna do is allow the jaw to slide forward like this, which actually creates more space. So I'll show you what it looks like to go in and out first. We interlace, it's a tight interlace. It's at the crown of the head. We bring our elbows towards each other and then keeping the shoulders on top of the hips, slide the chin towards the chest and I'm letting my jaw slide forward. To come out, I keep the little baby fingers interlaced, rest my palms in my forehead and come all the way up. So we'll just take it really easy guys. This is going to get to the erector spinae which is right behind the back of the neck there. It runs down through the spine. If you want, I might cue you to draw in your belly, you can round your back, which sends the further stretch further down the back. But we'll just start with the neck. Slide the chin towards the chest, don't round your back. So every exhale, we're just letting that jaw slide forward and just let everything relax. Make sure that the shoulder, shoulders slide down the back.
Guys, if you want to round your back here and draw your elbows further down, you can do that. And then change, come upright, slide the brow bones uh, to the palms and then come all the way up. Good job, guys. And then circles. Nice. We'll go into a classic neck stretch. So um, we'll just bring the back of one hand down the pants and then pulling across. We won't stay too long here, guys. We do a lot of neck stuff. Nice guys. Guys, I wanted to do quadratus lumbarum today because we haven't done that for ages. Now slide, open your eyes, look at me, just slide your hand down to the low ear and then push your head up. And then we'll do the other side. Just be really careful on the side we've just stretched, guys. That's good. Okay, and then slide your hand over the low ear and then push your head up. Good job, guys. And then hands on hips and then circles. So the neck's a little liberated. You can overdo your neck a little, guys, so just take it easy. Quadratus and barum. This is one of my favorite stretches ever, and I tell this story a lot. When I was young, girl, thank you very much, Lucy. Um, I pulled my lower back out and for three weeks I could barely walk. I was really freaking out because I got this job at this new spa and I was just having these spasms. And that's the first, and I found a book called Overcoming Neck and Back Pain by Kit Lachlan, who I ended up training with. He's based in the Institute of Sport in Canberra. And uh, I trained with him purely because this stretch completely fixed my issue. So quadratus lumbarum is a small triangular muscle that goes into the lumbar and then into towards the front of the hips, I think actually, or close to it. So it's a small triangular muscle that goes here in the back of the spine there. So you can do this with me. That's why we're here, right? Um, what you wanna do is sit on the front edge of a cushion and have a bent knee facing towards me and then keep your opposite leg kind of bent and pistol grip the big toe with the first and second finger. Now what you want to do is lift it and then slowly slide it across, but keep that upper arm inside the knee. That's really important. What we want to avoid is that because we lose leverage. So we want to keep sliding that foot straight. If this leg doesn't have to be straight. And what we want to do is bend this deep enough so that the upper arm is deep inside the knee capsule or in the thigh. Okay. Now that really, uh, that free hand, we put the back of that forearm on the back of the body and then rotate that top shoulder back. And the way I'm making this happen is I'm pushing this shoulder on top, if not behind the bottom shoulder. So every exhale I'm twisting and you get to feel it somewhere underneath the back hand there. It's a lower back stretch. We want to make sure that we don't lose the leverage in our low arm. We want to keep that upper arm inside the knee capsule. And sometimes every exhale, I look over my shoulder. With this pose, I'm not sure why, but you want to keep moving your head and neck around just a little because it gets a bit creaky. And remember the exhale, all the magic happens on the exhale. So every exhale, I'm rotating that top shoulder back by pushing in to the bottom shoulder. Now, some of you will be able to straighten that leg a little more and then bring this arm um, overhead and pistol grip that big toe and rotate the top shoulder back. Not a requirement. Some of you can graduate and put the hand behind your head, making sure that elbow is behind the bottom, the top elbow is behind the bottom elbow. So every exhale we twist, twist, twist. Some of you will start to feel it in the obliques and the ribcage, and that's fine. Oh, 
practice is a good one. I've wanted to do this for ages. There's a chair version as well. If you go to our website, yogalover.com, same spelling as this channel, you'll find a chair-based stretch which gets to this. It's a really good one. It's a lot easier in the chair. All right, guys, and then to come out, we reach forward and then walk our hands forward. Usually I'm instructive for people. You get points in our studio for being really dramatic. <laughs> Some students really commit, you know. I've never given anyone anything for it, so maybe I need to. What do you reckon? So we'll do the other side. <sighs> I'm much, I feel more comfortable teaching these slow classes. All right, guys, so we're pistol gripping. Remember the rule is the upper arm is inside the knee capsule or inner thigh. The free hand and forearm go behind the back and twist. It, where I'm firmly gripping that toe, rotating that top shoulder back. Nice, guys. Now, remember the variations are the neck or the thumb. I wouldn't bother with the thumb so much. Neck you really want to do only if the top shoulder is behind the bottom shoulder, okay? Otherwise just keep it behind your back. I think next class I'm going to show you that hip and bind. I actually wanted to do that today, but there's no one here to correct me or demand. It's kind of nice. <laughs> I miss you guys. If you want to do the hair behind your neck, you can do that. And change guys so roll forward roll forward and if you want to be dramatic you can <sighs> that was pretty dramatic all right guys let's finish with butterfly and then we'll go into savasana remember our sutra is a flexibility transformation coherence and stability. Guys, remember the rule is if the heels are close to the groin, you get more of a groin stretch. If they're further away towards the front of the mat, you get an ITB stretch. So you guys get to choose. We're going to Savasana after this. And of course, in Hatha, we would go in with a flat back, but this is Yin, so I'm just gonna go in with a rounded back. I like to fold my arms. snoring. He's so cute. Nice guys, and come all the way up. Beautiful guys, we're going to Savasana. So lying on your back. Slide your butt towards your heels, that's the easiest way to get down. We do that intuitively anyway. Beautiful guys. And then the back of the hands on the mat, so the palms face the ceiling, opens up the chest here, the upper chest, so our breathing is more easeful. I like to sway my knees side to side. If you've got a puppy or a fat baby, give them a cuddle. 
Beautiful. Yoga is uh, very repetitive if you think that Bikram's been teaching the same 26 poses for 30 plus years. And uh, in the beginning I didn't, I thought the variety was really important and there's definitely space for variety. But if you chip away at the same pose, which you can do for the rest of your life, there's always nuances, there's always something new and interesting and fascinating about it. So you'll find we repeat the same poses again and again and again. But we get these little breakthroughs. And so what yoga teaches us is if we just persist, routine is important, persistence, uh, quiet, calm, confident persistence, can be just as dynamic as variety. So snorkel inside your body, and I'll pull you out in a minute. more breaths. Nice guys, stretch your arms overhead. A little bit every day. So I'm going to um, post four evenings guys, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There will be yin classes at 5.30 and a 9 a.m. Saturday. Of course, you can watch them at any time after they've been launched, but that's when we'll launch them and uh, we'll leave the dynamic stuff for the crazy people. Sitting up, guys. Thank you, Nadi, again. And uh, namaste, guys. Thank you. Huh.